Hello again, let's talk about acids and bases. Now, um, not all acids and bases are inorganic compounds, but many of them are. And so we're gonna kind of put them in this inorganic compound category as we talk about them. What are acids and bases? We've all heard about acids. Hopefully you've heard about bases before as well. What in the world do we mean by this? This also gets into pH. What in the world do we mean about um, pH? So acids and bases, both of these types of compounds are electrolytes. So that means when they're in your body fluids, they're gonna have positive or negative charges when they're dissolved in your fluids. Incidentally, things that are positively and negatively charged love water. And uh, so that's why those water molecules love to interact with things that are positively or negatively charged. And that's why water is so good at dissolving um, ionic compounds and many acids and bases. Acids, what is an acid? Acids are hydrogen ion donors. All right, so when we're thinking about pH and acids and bases, it, the story is really gonna revolve around these guys. These are called hydrogen ions they have a positive charge. The reason for that is all a hydrogen atom is, hydrogen is the simplest element. You got a single proton in the nucleus and a single electron orbiting that nucleus. All right, that's all a hydrogen atom is. That's a neutral hydrogen atom. All right, so if we get rid of that one electron that electron is given up to some other atom. What do we have left? All you really have left is that proton in the nucleus, which has a positive charge. So that can also be represented as a hydrogen ion. Um, you'll also, though, see that referred to as a proton from time to time. That may, maybe even in your textbook might refer to those as protons. But when it comes to pH, acids and bases, this story really resolve, revolves around these guys because these guys are very reactive. They love to bond to other types of molecules. Some molecules give these hydrogen ions up to other molecules pretty easily. And uh, believe it or not, a critical aspect of human body homeostasis homeostasis of any living thing revolves around the concentration of those hydrogen ions you have in your body fluids. By concentration, it means if you look at like a particular volume of the fluid, um, what's the quantity of those hydrogen ions you have dissolved in that fluid? Is it higher? Is it lower? And um, as crazy as it may sound, that's what pH, uh, when you talk about pH, it's a measurement of those, the concentration of those ions that you have in a fluid. All right, we'll be talking more about that. Acids are in our compounds that are hydrogen ion donors, and uh, there are many different types of acids. This one is hydrochloric acid, which you can find in your stomach. That's your stomach acid is hydrochloric acid. You can find it in other places as well, like in batteries. And so when HCl, hydrochloric acid, is dissolved in water, it breaks apart into hydrogen ions and then your chloride negatively charged ions. So that's an ionic compound, but it is increasing when it dissolves in a fluid, those are increasing. You have more of those around if you dump some hydrochloric acid into a watery-based fluid. So because of that, this compound is called an acid. It gives off it breaks apart and releases hydrogen ions. All right, bases, on the other hand, are hydrogen ion acceptors. So they take up hydrogen ions that are floating around in a solution. So a really good example of this is, this is kind of your prototype base. This is sodium hydroxide. 
So that is a compound where when you take that and you dissolve it in a fluid, it breaks apart into a sodium ion, and then this is called a hydroxyl ion. It is an oxygen and a hydrogen that are bonded together, but overall they have a negative charge. They have an extra electron they're hanging on to. All right, so guess what? When you have these guys floating around in a fluid like your body fluids, OH negative loves H positives, and you always have these floating around in your body fluids. So guess what? When you have these guys floating around, they're going to be very strongly attracted to those guys. You put those two together, and what do you have? OH plus H gives you H2O, water. All right, so whenever you put something, you put a base into a fluid, um, bases tend to soak up hydrogen ions. So bases decrease the concentration of hydrogen ions you have in a fluid. Acids raise that concentration. So they have opposite effects. And like I said, the concentration, I know that's kind of abstract to think about, but the concentration you have of those hydrogen ions in a body fluid, for example, is extremely critical. You can't have too many and you can't have too few or the human body stops functioning. That's true for any living thing. All right, uh, so you do need to learn and remember how these things correlate. So um, acidic solutions contain higher concentrations of hydrogen ions than alkaline solutions. Alkaline is another term for base or basic. All right, so if in a solution, like a body fluid, the concentration, whenever you see those brackets like that, that's referring to the concentration. Again, that's how many of those ions do you have per unit of volume, like per milliliter of your body fluid. More of them, the solution is becoming more acidic, more acid. Um, if it decreases, if hydrogen ion levels decrease, alkalinity decreases. The fluid is becoming more basic or more alkaline. All right, and then sometimes you'll see that Another way to think about it is a more alkaline solution raises the concentration of those hydroxyl ions. And uh, the reason for that is if those go up, remember OH minuses in a solution find those positively charged hydrogen ions and soak them up. They bond with them and form water. So because of that, you have fewer hydrogen ions floating around in that fluid, so your concentration of hydrogen ions goes down. So that's kind of an indirect way that an alkaline-type compound, a base, uh, lowers those hydrogen ions that you have in a fluid. All right, how, how does all this relate to pH? All right, pH is, and hang on, I want to write on my screen here, but my... Uh, iPads goofing up. Probably it's the Wi-Fi that's goofing up. All right, let me just do this for a second. All right, so we said if you have an acidic solution, like a body fluid is becoming more acidic, you have more of these hydrogen ions in that fluid. And pH is a measurement. Did it come up? Oh, come on, behave. There we go. All right, pH means, literally means, power of hydrogen ions. That's what pH stands for, and it is a measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ions. It's a numerical value. Unfortunately, There's, a, there's something you got to remember in terms of hydrogen ion concentration and pH, because the values are actually the opposite of what you would think when you first learn about this. But if the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution increases, the pH value actually goes down. There is a mathematical reason for that, 
and we're not going to go through that in this class. If you take a chemistry class, like if you're going to get a bachelor's degree in nursing, you got to take a basic chemistry class, you'll certainly learn about that there. So it's the opposite of what you would expect, and yes, there is a mathematical reason for that. It gets into exponents, uh, that area of mathematics. All right, the pH scale goes from 0 to 14. Maybe you've learned that before. 7 is neutral, and anything below 7 is considered to be an acidic pH, so 0 to 699. The pH scale is logarithmic, and that's a mathematical term. What that means is if you have a solution that has a pH of 5, it's actually 10 times as acidic as a solution that has a pH of six. That means you have ten times greater concentration of hydrogen ions at pH five than you have at pH six. Likewise, pH six within that fluid you have a ten times greater concentration of hydrogen ions than that same solution at pH seven. pH seven is neutral, but you still have a certain concentration of hydrogen ions that's associated with pH seven. So each time you go down a whole unit on the pH scale, you're, you're winding up with 10 times the concentration of hydrogen ions that you had before. On the alkaline side, okay, so anything above 7, 7.01 to 14, is the basic or the alkaline side of the pH scale. And as you're going up on the pH scale, hydrogen ion concentration is going down. So you just got to kind of remember that it's the, uh, the opposite is true. Those, those two go in reverse of each other. All right, this is a diagram from your textbook, which is just showing you, just trying to give you some frame of reference for these different pH values and things that we are familiar with. One thing I want to point out to you here, we see blood on here, good old human blood, pH of 7.4. Human body fluid pH. You guys should know this forever. The normal homeostatic range is 735 to 745. That is the normal homeostatic range for human body fluid pH. And your body goes to great lengths to maintain that pH range because you're, those pesky little hydrogen ions, you got to have just the right concentration of them for all of your other molecules to be able to do their jobs and to have their proper shapes and structures. If you have too many of them, um, the other molecules in your body don't function properly. If you have too few of them, they don't function properly. And you got a really narrow window of pH at which the human body can function properly. If you start going just a little bit above that or a little bit below that, you're going to get very sick and you actually can't survive if you go, um, you know, even a couple of um, tenths of a, um, a point above that or below. You can't survive for very long. All right, so some things. Now down here, you see some various things that we're familiar with that are on the uh, acidic side of the scale, you know, like good old milk is a little bit acidic, 6.3 to 6.6, .6. black coffee, uh, pH 5, so that's fairly acidic. That's why they tell you if you drink a lot of coffee, the enamel can come off of your teeth due to the acidity. Wine, you, know, you drink wine, that's 2.5 to 3.5, lemon juice, pH 2, um, one molar hydrochloric acid, that'd be pretty strong hydrochloric acid, is actually a pH zero, so that's very acidic. So if you stuck your finger in that, that would damage your the tissues pretty quickly. And then going upward over here, this is the alkaline side. We're getting more and more alkaline, more and more basic as we go up the scale over here. And so some things that we encounter on a daily basis that are basic solutions, good old household bleach, pH 9.5, ammonia is pH 10.5 to 11.5, oven cleaner, you guys know how caustic that is. You spray oven cleaner. If you breathe that in, it's very irritating. And that's at pH 13.5. So likewise, things that are way up here on the pH scale um, are damaging as well to our tissue. So you have to be careful with these types of 
types of things. So our bodies are very good at maintaining pH homeostasis if you're healthy, obviously because I know I drink coffee all day. That's pH 5. So I'm swallowing all this pH 5 stuff all day. You know, you would think my body fluids would be right around pH 5. I drink so much coffee, but our bodies are so good at controlling pH that that doesn't happen. My body fluid pH stays between 735 and 745 just like everybody else's. And you'll learn a lot more about how your body controls pH when you get to biology 202. That's a big topic in that class and when you get to nursing. If you're going into nursing, that's a huge topic in nursing. Okay, uh, acid-base homeostasis, as I've already mentioned, I think I've covered most of this already. That pH value is critical. Cells don't function. Tissues get damaged if you move out of this range, 735 to 745. And uh, incidentally, how would you describe human body fluid pH? Is it neutral? Is it acidic? Is it alkaline? All right, so the, the pH scale 0 to 14 has nothing to do with human body fluid. 7 is neutral. So 735 to 745 is what? A little bit alkaline. We are slightly alkaline. So human body fluids are not neutral. They're a little bit on the alkaline side. pH is controlled by the kidneys, lungs, buffers. Buffers are compounds that we have in our body fluids that help control pH. They soak up hydrogen ions if you have too many, or they give off hydrogen ions if you don't have enough in your body fluids. And you'll learn more about that again when you get to biology 202. You may hear um, people talk about the human diet needing to be more alkaline, and that kind of gets into this idea that our body fluid pH is supposed to be slightly alkaline, but you'll hear about how like the modern American diet um, tends to be too acidic, and there are some people who think that a lot of the foods we typically eat, like a lot of dairy products, for example, are acidic, um, and our bodies have to work harder than they're supposed to at maintaining uh, pH homeostasis. Whereas if you eat things, a lot of the things that we're supposed to eat, like lots of vegetables and fruits, those tend, most of them anyway, tend to be a little bit on the alkaline side, which is where our human body fluids naturally want to be. So the idea is, well, if you eat those kinds of foods, maybe your body doesn't uh, have to work quite so hard at maintaining your pH homeostasis. Whether or not that's true, that hasn't been proven, but you will hear about that. Um, from time to time if you're into reading about nutrition. Okay, so inorganic compounds, we talked about three major types, water, salts, and then acids and bases. Many of those are inorganic, not all of them. There are organic acids and bases as well, but those were the three main types of inorganic compounds we talked about. Next video lecture, I'm gonna introduce organic compounds, and then we're gonna have separate lectures. These are so important and you hear about them so much all throughout your coursework that we'll have separate lectures on the four major types of these.